السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أبنائي وبناتي الطلاب مرحبا بحضراتكم بلتقي مع حضراتكم في تاني محاضرة في المحاضرات الخاصة بمادة International Banks المحاضرة اللي أنا بسجلها لحضراتكم ديت سبق وأخدناها اليومين اللي فاتوا يومي الأربعاء والخميس 25 مارس و 26 مارس اشتغلنا مع بعض المحاضرات بتاعتنا على الزوم وشرحناها بالكامل ووضحنا كل شيء فيها بالكامل الحمد لله وأجبنا على استفساراتكم لكن بسبب رغبة البعض من حضراتكم انه يكون معاكم مرجع ليها صوتي للمحاضرات يقدروا تذكر منه فعلشان كده هعمل لحضراتكم هذه المحاضرة لكن الشرح فيها هيبقى شرح أساسي بالتفاصيل احنا شرحناها في المحاضرات بتاعة الزوم خلاص والمفروض حضراتكم بتبقوا كتبتوا ورايا الملاحظات في أي حاجة معاكم أو بتكونوا سجلتوا مثلا المحاضرة أوديو بطريقة أو بأخرى عشان تسمعوها فالمحاضرة دي هي زي محاضرة موجزة ملخصة مشروحة لحضراتكم بشأن الموضوع بتاعنا إن شاء الله النهاردة زي ما اتفقنا احنا احنا زي ما اتفقنا في تشابتر 2 انترناشونال بانكينج ايفولوشن انستيتيوشنز اند مين اوبريت ذس از ذا كونتنت اوف ذس تشابتر لاست ليكتشرز وي اوريدي اكسبليند the introduction the history of increasing importance of international banking as we mentioned before there was different situations that happened before the war led war 2 and after war led war 2 that increased the importance and the need of international banking services. We mentioned that we had three main results of Bretton Woods Conference, IMF, IPRD, which later became WB, the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, which became later World Bank, and finally, ITO, International Trade Organization. It first appeared as GATT and then became the ITO. Also, one of the variables that affect and increase the importance of international banks was the role of multinational companies, MNCs, in the economic also globalization and technological revolution affect the economic and in this case as a reason for these four changes the importance of international banking increased around the world and we also explained in this chapter the forms of international banking institutions. And we mentioned that we have two categories of these forms. Physical forms, which divided into representative offices, foreign branches, and foreign subsidiaries. And the other category is the forms that depend on internet-based means of communication, which is SWIFT and CHIPS. And the final thing we explained last lecture was the foreign exchange markets. We explained the definition of foreign exchange markets we also define the exchange rate as the, the price of one unit of foreign currency, the price 
of one unit of foreign currency valuated in terms of units of domestic currency. Valuated in terms of units of domestic currency. And we mentioned that we have three different exchange rate systems. We have the fixed exchange rate system, which depend on the monetary authority to determine the exchange rate. The second system is the free floating exchange rate system. In this system, exchange rate determined only according to the demand and supply forces. And the third system is the managed exchange rate system. In this system, we let the demand and supply forces determine the exchange rate, but within a specific limit. If the exchange rate exceeds these limits, whether higher or lower, the monetary authority here uses the official reserves to change the exchange rate back to the required limits. These was the topics we explained last lecture. And today we are going to explain the operations or the activities in the foreign exchange market. We are going to explain today speculation and arbitrage. And next lecture, inshallah, we are going to explain hedging operations. So let's start now, my dear students, with the operations in the foreign exchange market. What's the mean of these operations or activities? The operations in the foreign exchange market could be conducted with the aim of achieving profit, such as the case of speculation and arbitrage activities. So, we are here saying that these operations may aim for the traders to achieve something. So they may aim to achieve profit. In this case, those who deals in the foreign exchange market will deal using speculation or arbitrage activities. The other aim is the aim of hedging. The aim of hedging. The aim of hedging uses different derivatives such as the forward contracts and option contracts for example especially when applying a free floating exchange rate system so again we have two aims of the operations in the foreign exchange market the first one is achieving profit in this case we are dealing in the foreign exchange market using these activities, speculation and arbitrage. And the second aim is the hedging. In this case, we use derivatives such as forward contracts or option contracts. Hedging will be explained next lecture, inshallah. But today, in this lecture, we are going to explain the meaning of speculation in details and arbitrage. Speculation. What's the meaning of speculation? In the speculation activity, the speculator estimates the expected future movements in the exchange rate through relying on technical or fundamental forecasting methods. So again, let's remember 
those who deals in the foreign exchange market as we mentioned two slides before in slide number five we mentioned that there is an aim for those who trade in the foreign exchange market to achieve profit and in this case they are going to use two types or to do two types of activities speculation and arbitrage so here when we speak about a speculator who estimates the expected future movements in the exchange rate through relying on technical or fundamental forecasting methods the speculator do that to achieve profit the speculator do that to achieve profit he tries to expect and predict the future exchange rates that will occur in the future using different methods different forecasting methods technical or fundamental and according to these methods according to its results plus his experience speculator would decide currently now the suitable currency conversion to be undertaken with the hope of achieving profit so the speculator tries to use different forecasting methods technical or fundamental why he is doing that he is doing that to expect to predict the, the, the future movements in the exchange rate so according to that he is going to make a decision he is going to make a decision he is going to decide the suitable and the better currency conversion the suitable and better currency conversion to be undertaken with the hope of achieving profit but we have to know that there is no guarantee that the profit in this case will be matched 100% as forecasted or even to be achieved let's try to understand what i mentioned now in the following example let's rephrase in details that the speculator might expect an increase in the exchange rate in the future so he used different forecasting methods technical or fundamental and according to these results he expected an increase in the exchange rate in the future for example let's say that the exchange rate is going to increase the exchange rate for dollar will increase from 18 Egyptian pound per dollar to 19 Egyptian pound per dollar within 40 days this is his expectation he is expecting that increase so in this case the speculator would have an incentive to buy the foreign currency now he is going to buy the foreign currency now with the aim of selling it in the future when hopefully its price will increase as forecasted so he is expecting the exchange rate will increase from 18 egyptian pound to 19 so why not i achieve a profit by buying the dollars now when its price is only 18 egyptian pound per dollar and later if my expectations is true if my expectations is accurate the exchange rate will increase then and will reach 19 egyptian pound per dollar then i'm going to sell the dollars i have and i will achieve a profit one egyptian pound per dollar i'm going to achieve a profit one egyptian pound per dollar which is the difference between the two exchange rates 
let's rephrase what I mentioned now shortly in Arabic. يبقى في المضاربة يا شباب يعتمد المضارب على تحليل السوق وتوقع تغيرات أسعار الصرف في المستقبل. ووفقا لهذه التغيرات اللي في المستقبل سيتوقع سعر صرف معين في المستقبل. في المثال اللي بنذكره الآن يتوقع أن يرتفع سعر الصرف من 18 جنيه للدولار الواحد ل 19 جنيه خلال 40 يوم. إذا سيكون القرار الأفضل لهذا المتاجر في العملة لهذا المضارب أن يشتري الآن الدولارات بهذا السعر 18 جنيه للدولار الواحد ويأمل أن تتحقق توقعاته في المستقبل ويصل سعر الصرف إلى 19 جنيه للدولار الواحد وفي هذه الحالة سيقوم ببيع الدولارات التي اشتراها وسيحقق مكسب هذا المكسب مقداره جنيه واحد في الدولار However, the foreign currency might have a higher price than expected, which means more profit than expected. If we reuse the example we mentioned seconds ago, if the exchange rate didn't only reach 19 Egyptian pound per dollar, for example, it reached 19 and a half or 20 Egyptian pound per dollar. In this case, the speculator achieved more profits. Also, his expectation may not 100% match the exchange rate, the foreign currency may not be as expected. The foreign currency might have a lower price the exchange rate will not reach 19 egyptian pound per dollar it will only reach for example 18.6 18 and a half 18.4 for example so in this case the profits the speculator expected decreases he expected an increase by one Egyptian pound per dollar. He expected that he is going to achieve a profit one Egyptian pound per dollar. But what happened is a lower profit. And we don't have any doubt that sure if the exchange rate didn't increase as expected, and instead of that, it decreased from 18 Egyptian pound to 17.5 uh, or 17.2 or lower. In this case, the speculator bought dollars hoping its price will increase. But what happened is that its price decreased and he faced a loss in this case. In this regard, speculator, as we mentioned, uses two different forecasting methods, technical forecasting methods and fundamental forecasting methods. What's the meaning of technical forecasting methods? In technical forecasting methods, speculator rely on the estimating, rely on estimating the exchange rate movements through analyzing the past historical trend of movement in the exchange rate based on the assumption that the past would repeat itself in a trend. Let's say it again and then explain it. In technical forecasting, speculators would rely on estimating the exchange rate movements through what? Through analyzing the past historical trend. The past historical trend. Of what? Of movements in the exchange rate, based on the assumption that the past would repeat itself in a trend. Let's have a little example here. For example, 
through analyzing the past six months, through analyzing the past six months, we notice a trend that every time the exchange rate decreases, if the exchange rate decreases two weeks in a row, two weeks in a row, the exchange rate after these two weeks increased by 25% in the next three days. So now we are speaking about a pattern. We are speaking about a pattern when a specific trend repeated time after time, when a specific trend repeated from time to another and became a pattern. In this case, we can use this pattern, this past historical trend, to forecast and to predict the future movement in the exchange rate. So, in the past six months, if we have a pattern that every two weeks, if there is a decrease for a continuous two weeks in a row, always the exchange rate increased by 25% in three days. So, I can wait the future and focus in the future movements of the exchange rate. And in the future, if the exchange rate decreases for two weeks in a row, I can forecast, I can predict that at the end of these two weeks, the exchange rate is going to increase again by 25% because the past would repeat itself in a trend. We have to know that technical forecasting is not 100% accurate and we must not depend on technical forecasting only. We have to depend on technical and fundamental forecasting at the same time. So let me rephrase the technical forecasting again in Arabic. في التحليل الفني يا شباب نعتمد على تحليل تحركات الماضي في سعر الصرف فإذا تغير سعر الصرف في الماضي باتجاه معين وأصبح هذا الاتجاه نمطا متكررا repeated pattern نمطا متكررا أستطيع إذا وجدت هذا النمط الآن أو في المستقبل الأتنبأ بسعر الصرف وذكرنا مثال على سبيل المثال إذا وجدنا في الماضي في الست شهور الماضية نمطا تكرر أكثر من مرة نمطا تكرر في الست شهور الماضية أكثر من مرة ثلاث أو أربع مرات مثلا هذا النمط كان كالآتي ينخفض سعر الصرف أسبوعين متتاليين دون أي ارتفاع ينخفض سعر الصرف أسبوعين متتاليين دون أي ارتفاع هذا كان نمط الماضي بعد انتهاء الأسبوعين نجد أن سعر الصرف يرتفع بنسبة 25% لمدة ثلاثة أيام وراء بعض في هذه الحالة أصبح هذا نمط سلوك سعر الصرف في الماضي في هذه الحالة أصبح نمطا متكررا هذا النمط هو الانخفاض المتتالي أسبوعين متتاليين يؤدون بعد ذلك الارتفاع مقداره 25% في الثلاثة أيام اللاحقة في الثلاثة أيام اللي بعدهم وبهذا النمط أستطيع أن أتنبأ أنه في المستقبل إذا حدث انخفاض في سعر الصرف أسبوعين متتاليين فأستطيع أن أتنبأ بأن الثلاثة أيام التي بعدها سيرتفع سعر الصرف بنسبة 25% وأبدأ أتعامل وأتوقع معاملاتي في سعر الصرف وفقا لهذا التنبؤ يجب أن لا نعتمد على التحليل الفني بنسبة 100% فقط منفردا بل يجب أن نضع في حسباننا أيضا أهمية التحليل المالي What's the meaning of 
fundamental forecasting. On the other hand, fundamental forecasting is based on analyzing the economic conditions affecting the exchange rate. For example, by analyzing the balance of payment position, political stability, interest rates, domestically and internationally, and inflation rate. These variables affect the exchange rate. And we have to use the different forecasting methods related to fundamental analysis to have an accurate expectation for the exchange rate in the future. Because, for example, in balance of payment, if we have a deficit, that will affect the exchange rate. We might have an increasing in the exchange rate because of this deficit. Another example, if we are speaking about political instability, in this case, political instability, political instability affects the exchange rate. If we have in any country a political instability, the exchange rate will increase. The foreign currency is going to have an appreciation, an increasing in the value, and the domestic currency will have a depreciation, a decreasing in the value. Yes, we have another economic variables that affect the exchange rate. They are in the following slide. There are more factors may have a significant effect on speculators' success on their expectations. For example, the government debt, the information availability, transparency, governance, official foreign exchange reserves and of course one of the most important factors that affect the exchange rate is the size of the unofficial foreign exchange market the size of the unofficial foreign exchange market and the volume of its transaction known commonly as the black market known as the black market. We have to mention that when expecting the exchange rate to decrease, when the exchange rate is decreasing and we are expecting the exchange rate to decrease, in this case, speculators who deals in this situation called a speculators dealing in the peers market. Again, if the exchange rate is decreasing and is going to be decreasing again, we have an expectation. Traders, most of them have an expectation that the exchange rate is going to keep decreasing. In this case, speculators who deals in this market called speculator dealing in the peers market if speculator is dealing in the peers market the optimal decision in this case would be to buy the domestic currency and sell the foreign currency if speculator is dealing in the peers market the optimal decision for them is to buy the domestic currency and sell the foreign currency. On the other hand, if we are dealing in a situation that the market is increasing, the exchange rate is increasing, and we have a future expectation about more increasing in the exchange rate, in this case, a speculator is dealing in the pool market 
speculator is dealing in the pool market. So dealing in the pool market implies expecting the exchange rate to increase. Dealing in the pool market implies expecting the exchange rate to increase and thus it would be an optimal decision for them to buy the foreign currency and sell the domestic one. Shortly in Arabic, حينما تكون توقعات سعر الصرف أنها ستنخفض حينما يكون سعر الصرف منخفضا وينخفض ونتوقع استمرار انخفاضه يفضل هنا على المضاربين القرار الأمثل بالنسبة لهم هو بيع العملة الأجنبية وشراء العملة المحلية أما إذا كان السوق ترتفع فيه أسعار الصرف ومن المتوقع أن تستمر في الارتفاع ففي هذه الحالة يفضل للمضاربين أن يقوموا بشراء العملة الأجنبية ويبيعوا العملة المحلية Let's have here an example in peers market, about the peers market. A speculator is expecting the exchange rate to decrease from 18 Egyptian pound to 17 Egyptian pound within two weeks. In this case, if he owns $10,000, if he owns $10,000, now how much these $10,000 is worth it. It's worth 180,000 Egyptian pound. It worths 180,000 Egyptian pound. What will happen if the speculator keeps or hold these $10,000 for two weeks or more? And his expectation happened. What if the speculator hold these two ten thousand dollars for two weeks or more, and his expectation happened? In this case, after two weeks, the ten thousand dollars he owns will no more equal. 180,000 Egyptian pound will no more equals 180,000 Egyptian pound. It will worth then 170,000 Egyptian pound or less. So if his expectation happened and he didn't sell the foreign currency and buy a domestic currency, he will achieve loss, not profit. So the optimal decision for this speculator in this case would be to decrease that loss in the value of the money. The optimal decision for him would be to decrease the loss in the value of the money he owns. So it's better now to buy the domestic currency and sell the foreign one. Let's have a numerical example here about speculation. If the current exchange rate is 17 Egyptian pound per dollar, and according to the Ministry of Finance yearly report, there is a deficit in the balance of payment in Egypt. Noting that Egypt is applying a free floating exchange rate system and the currency trader is currently holding, he is going to trade using it, is 20,000 Egyptian pounds. 20,000 Egyptian pounds. What's the requirement of this example? The requirement are number one. Would the currency trader prefer to keep holding Egyptian pound or to convert it to dollars? According to the information we just read, is it better for the trader 
to keep holding the Egyptian pound or to convert it to dollars, and why? We have to explain that. Requirement number two, if the currency trader decided to convert the fund in dollars, how much dollars would we have? How much dollars would the speculator, the currency trader, would have if he converted the fund he owns to dollars? Requirement number three, as a continuous case, but with different incident, if the future date showed us that the exchange rate reached 15 Egyptian pound per dollar, there is a reversed expectation for the speculator. His expectation reversed. In the future, the exchange rate didn't increase, but it decreased. It reached 15 Egyptian pound per dollar. Would the transaction undertaken in step number two allow the trader to achieve a profit or loss? And by how much is this profit or loss? Let's now solve this example and questions number one the requirement number one we can answer it using the following the rational currency trader would prefer to buy dollars rather than keeping the money in egyptian pound or as egyptian pound why because according to what we mentioned in the requirements in the information of the example According to the fundamental forecasting approach, there will be a great opportunity to achieve a profit. How is that? Because the balance of payment is having a deficit. And when balance of payment position is deficit, that will affect the exchange rate. And the exchange rate is expecting to be increased. The exchange rate is expecting to be increased. So, according to the fundamental forecasting approach, there will be a great opportunity to achieve a profit. The exchange rate will increase from 17 to any limit we can expect. So, the forecasting indicates the probability of having a depreciation in Egyptian pound and an appreciation in dollar the forecasting indicates the probability of having a depreciation in egyptian pound and an appreciation in the dollar an increase in the exchange rate so it doesn't make sense that the currency trader according to this forecasting would decide to keep the egyptian pound there is a depreciation in the egyptian pound there is a decrease in the value in the Egyptian pound. So why I keep it? While I have an appreciation in dollar, I have an expectation that the dollar's value will increase in the future. I having an expectation that there is an increase in the exchange rate. Why I would keep my Egyptian pound and didn't buy a dollar? So in this case, I will decide as a currency trader, as a speculator, to achieve a profit to sell the domestic currency to sell the Egyptian pound and buy dollars. So, answer number two, the requirement number two, that 20,000 Egyptian pound would be converted to United States dollars according to the current spot exchange rate in the market at that time, which is 17 Egyptian pound per dollar. How to convert it? I'm going to convert it using the exchange rate. If I want to convert from Egyptian pound to dollars, I will divide the amount of money I have by the exchange rate. I will divide the amount of Egyptian pound I have by the exchange rate to convert the Egyptian pound per dollars. So 
20,000 Egyptian pound divided by 17 will equal 1,176 and half dollars. 1,176 and half dollars. So the ways of using the exchange rate above can be explained as following. To convert from Egyptian pound to dollar, we divide the amount of Egyptian uh, pound by the exchange rate. The equation will be EGB divided by exchange rate equals USD. And what if I want to convert from dollar to Egyptian pound? Yes, you can use the same exchange rate. How? In this case, we multiply. We didn't divide. We multiply the amount of dollars by the exchange rate. If I want to, to convert, if I want to convert from United States dollars to Egyptian pound, we multiply the amount of dollars by the exchange rate. So USD multiplied by the exchange rate equals EGB. And small note we can use this equation with different exchange rate for different currencies okay نستطيع استخدام هذه المعادلات مع عملات اخرى ليس فقط مع الدولار فاذا كان لدينا سعر صرف اليورو او الاسترليني او اي عمله اخرى نستطيع ان نستخدم نفس هذه المعادلات لكننا نستبدل ال USD ال United States Dollars with the other currency بالعملة الأخرى. We can replace the USD by any currency we want using the same equation. So according to what we mentioned before, that the exchange rate decreased instead of increasing as expectation. The exchange rate decreased, not increased as we expected. What we are going to do? We have to deal with this scenario as a continuous case, but with different incident. So if the future exchange rate reached 15 Egyptian pound per dollar, the trader would have a loss if he undertook the transaction in the previous step, step number two. We already did that. We already bought dollars and sold the Egyptian pound. We already expected the exchange rate will increase. This is why we bought dollars and we sold the Egyptian pound. We sold the 20,000 Egyptian pound and bought instead of it. 1176 and half dollars why there is a situation here because the exchange rate decreased a loss because when the exchange rate decreases there is a depreciation in dollar not appreciation as we expected we expected the dollar will have an appreciation what happened is a depreciation in the dollar not appreciation and we expected the Egyptian pound will have a depreciation what happened is there is an appreciation in the Egyptian pound not a depreciation when a depreciation in dollar and an appreciation in Egyptian pound occurred, the 1,176 and half dollar he holds would have a less value, would have an equivalent value of 1,176 and half dollar multiplied by the exchange rate, as we mentioned. If we want to convert from dollar to Egyptian pound, we multiply the amount of dollars by the exchange rate. So here we are going to convert what he holds 
what he owns of dollars to Egyptian pound to calculate if he achieved a profit or loss. So 1,176 and a half dollars multiplied by 15 Egyptian pound equals 17,647 and a half Egyptian pound. That loss happened due to the unfavorable, unexpected movement in the exchange rate for the currency. We expected the exchange rate to increase. What happened actually is the exchange rate decreases. Now we pierce a loss. We pierce a loss of how much? 2,352 and a half Egyptian pound. How we calculated this loss? We Get the amount after trade minus the amount before trade. One thousand, sorry, seventeen thousand six hundred forty-seven and half minus twenty thousand equals negative two thousand three hundred fifty-two and half. Here is the table that shows what I calculated originally. We can use this equation to calculate the profit or loss of speculator expectation. Amount after trade in Egyptian pound minus the original amount before trade. The original amount before trade of Egyptian pound equals. If the result is positive, in this case, we achieve profit. If the result is negative, in, case, in this case, we achieved loss. In our case, we achieved loss because the result was negative. So in general, currency amount after trade minus currency amount before trade equals profit if the result is positive, loss if the result is negative. We have a final reminder about speculation. We have a very important final reminder about speculation. The profit in speculation cases is not 100% guaranteed. The profit in case of speculation is not guaranteed. It's not 100% guaranteed or 100% matched as the exchange rate might move in the opposite direction relative to the expectation of the currency trader. Let me re-explain the example and this rule again shortly in Arabic في المثال السابق كان عندنا متاجر يملك عشرين ألف جنيه طبقا لتقرير وزارة المالية بأنه عندنا عجز في ميزان المدفوعات توقع هذا المضارب أن يرتفع سعر الصرف فاشترى دولارات وكان سعر الصرف 17 جنيه للدولار الواحد قام بشراء دولارات وأصبحت العشرين ألف جنيه التي يمتلكها قيمتها 1176 دولار ونصف ما حدث هو أن توقعاته لم تتحقق انخفض سعر الصرف وأصبح 15 جنيه للدولار الواحد في هذه الحالة بدلا من أن يحقق هذا المضارب مكسب حقق خسارة كم قيمة هذه الخسارة؟ نعيد تحويل الدولارات ال 1176 دولار ونصف التي يمتلكها إلى جنيهات سنجد أن قيمتها 17643 ونصف جنيها هذا الفارق هو فارق قد خسره المضارب والقاعدة العامة في المضاربة هي أن المضاربة الأرباح فيها غير مضمونة بنسبة 100% لأن سعر الصرف ليس شرطا أن يتحرك في نفس توقعات المضارب بل قد يتحرك في اتجاهات معاكسة أو اتجاهات أخرى انتهينا من شرح المضاربة speculation now we are going to explain arbitrage. The supply and demand forces 
in arbitrage cases would eliminate the exchange rate differences. So arbitrage activity is referred to, to as being self-eliminating process. Once it's available, differences will soon disappear due to the interaction between the supply and demand forces in the different markets. When all traders go to the cheap market and buy the foreign currency, in this case, there is an increasing in this market on foreign currency. Why? Because the demand on the foreign currency in this market will increase. So, if we are having market A and the exchange rate there for a foreign currency is cheaper, when all traders go to this market, to market A, and buy the foreign currency, this is an increasing demand. And when demand increases, higher than supply prices increases and in market b the expensive exchange rate when all traders goes to this market to market b and sell the foreign currency they bought from the cheaper market when all traders goes to this market market b and sell the foreign currency there will be an increase in the supply of the foreign currency in this market so when supply is higher than demand prices goes down prices decreases so the exchange rate will decrease so the increasing exchange rate in market a and the decreases in the exchange rate in market B. Again, in market A, we are having an increasing after trade. After trade, the exchange rate will increase in market A, and after trade, the, the exchange rate in market B will decrease till all the exchange rates are equal. Shortly in Arabic, يستفيد هنا المتعاملين بالاربيتراش بانهم بيشتروا العمله من السوق الارخص اللي سعر الصرف فيه ارخص ويقومون ببيعها مره اخرى في السوق الذي يكون سعر الصرف فيه اعلى ليكسبوا الفرق في الاسعار لكن حينما يذهب كل المتاجرين بالعمله الى هذا السوق منخفض قيمه سعر الصرف ماركت ايه مثلا سيزيد الطلب على العملة الأجنبية في هذا السوق ماركت ايه وحينما يزيد الطلب على العملة الأجنبية بمقدار أكبر من العرض ترتفع الأسعار في ماركت ايه سيرتفع سعر الصرف وحينما يذهب كل هؤلاء المتعاملين بالعملة الأجنبية للماركت بي ويقومون ببيع العملة الأجنبية التي اشتروها من السوق الرخيص أو من الشيبر ماركت سيزداد العرض في هذا الماركت في ماركت بي العرض من العملة الأجنبية المعروض من العملة الأجنبية حينما يرتفع عن الطلب يحدث انخفاض في سعر الصرف ما سيحدث في ماركت A في السوق الأول بعد عملية الأربيتراج هو أنه سيظل يرتفع سعر الصرف في الماركت A الذي كان سعر الصرف فيه منخفض اللي كان سعر الصرف فيه رخيص وفي سعر في السوق الذي كان فيه سعر الصرف مرتفع نتيجة زيادة العرض سيظل سعر الصرف ينخفض 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 إلى أن تقترب وتتساوى أسعار الصرف في الأسواق المختلفة. Let's have a numerical example about arbitrage. And this is the final example we are going to have today in our lecture. If the spot exchange rate in Egypt is 14 Egyptian pound per dollar, 14 جنيه للدولار الواحد, while in United States, we have to know that in United States, dollar is the domestic currency and Egyptian pound is foreign currency. This is why we saw the exchange rate in USA like this. 
one Egyptian pound equals 0 0.08 dollars, eight cents. لأن العملة الأجنبية في مصر هي الدولار لذلك نرى سعر الصرف بهذا الشكل في مصر الدولار يساوي 14 جنيه أما في أمريكا الدولار هو العملة المحلية لذلك لا نرى في أمريكا سعر صرف للدولار بل نرى سعر صرف للعملات الأخرى وفقا لتعريف سعر الصرف So in USA one Egyptian pound equals 0.08 dollars 8 cents الجنيه في أمريكا يساوي 8 سنت Let's reverse the exchange rate in USA to have the exchange rate for dollar. We are going to divide 1 by the exchange rate in USA. 1 divided by 0 0.08. We are going to reverse the exchange rate in USA. So in USA, 1 Egyptian pound equals 0 0.08 dollar, 8 cents. It's the same. Exchange rate when we said in USA one dollar equals twelve and half Egyptian pound. في أمريكا سعر الصرف مكتوب بالنسبة للعملة الأجنبية الجنيه يساوي ثمانية سنت. حتى نستطيع رؤية سعر الصرف في أمريكا للدولار سنعكس هذا السعر سنعكس سعر الصرف حنقسم نقسم واحد على سعر الصرف واحد على صفر بوينت صفر تمانية في الآلة الحاسبة يطلع لكم يا شباب اتناشر ونص يبقى سعر الصرف في أمريكا الجنيه بيساوي تمانية سنت يعني نفس القيمة هو هو لما نقول إنه في أمريكا الدولار بيساوي اتناشر جنيه ونص The trader owns ten thousand Egyptian pound to trade by required How can the currency trader achieve a profit and what's the value of such profit? In arbitrage, the trader is going to buy the United States dollars from USA, the cheaper market, with 12 and a half Egyptian pound per dollar, because it's the cheaper there than Egypt. It's cheaper there than Egypt. He will have in this case 800 dollars. So to convert from Egyptian pound to dollars, we divided by the exchange rate in United States. 10,000 divided by 12 and a half equals 800 dollars. Then the trader will sell the dollars he bought from USA, the cheaper market. He is going to sell it again in Egypt, the expensive market, where Each dollar would be sold with 14 Egyptian pound. To convert from dollar to Egyptian pound, we multiply the United States dollars by the exchange rate. But in this case, we are going to use the exchange rate in Egypt, the expensive market. So 800 dollars multiplied by 14, the exchange rate in Egypt equals 11,200 Egyptian pound. The profit the trader gain is amount after trade in Egyptian pound minus original amount of Egyptian pound. If the result is positive, there is a profit. If the result is negative, there is a loss. In our case, amount after trade is 11,200. Amount before trade, the original amount was 10,000. So 11,200. Minus 10,000 Egyptian pound equals 1,200 Egyptian pound. So this is a positive re result. This is a profit. The trader achieved a profit. By how much? By 1,200 Egyptian pound in total, which means the trader achieved 1.5 Egyptian pound profit per dollar. The 1.5, we can have it in two different ways. The 1.5 Egyptian pound profit per dollar, we can have it in two different ways. The first one is the higher exchange rate minus the lower exchange rate. Okay. 
and the other way is to divide the profit to divide the profit the 1200 egyptian pound by the amount of dollar the 800 dollar 1200 divided by 800 equals 1.5 choose whatever you want choose the easiest way to calculate the profit per dollar whether to divide the amount after trade by the dollars you own or by using the higher exchange rate minus the lower exchange rate the differences between the higher exchange rate and the lower exchange rate so in arbitrage the profit is guaranteed because of the differences of the exchange rates in different markets if many traders do the same buying dollars from usa using egyptian pound the demand of dollar will increase in united states and the supply of Egyptian pound will increase in the United States. This will cause a decrease in the exchange rate in USA, a depreciation in Egyptian pound, and an appreciation in United States dollars. Don't forget that for USA, the Egyptian pound is the foreign currency. So again, if the demand increases in USA, the demand of dollar increases in USA and the supply of egyptian pound increases in usa because all traders went to usa and bought united states dollars and sell the egyptian pound in this case in usa in this case in usa we had a depreciation in egyptian pound and an appreciation in united states dollars here we have the opposite but for egypt in egypt market you can understand it by yourself and this is what will happen in egypt the exchange rate of dollar will drop so instead of 14 egyptian pound per dollar it will decrease for example become 13.9 13.8 and so on simultaneously in usa the exchange rate will be eight cents for one egyptian pound seven and a half cents per egyptian pound in other words in usa the exchange rate will increase from 12 and a half to 12.7 to 13 to 13.2 and so on the exchange rate of dollar in egypt will keep drop and in usa will keep increase Till both foreign currency markets will have the same exchange rate. For example, one dollar equals 13.5 Egyptian pound in Egypt and also in USA. But in USA perspective, in point of view of USA, it will be written like this: one Egyptian pound equals 0 0.074 dollar. My best regards for you. I hope you understood this lecture. بشكركم بعتذر على الإطالة. شرحنا امبارح وأول امبارح المحاضرات في مواعدها خمس محاضرات وعملنا أول امبارح محاضرة مسائية إضافية للناس اللي كان عندها بعض المشاكل في الحضور من الساعة تسعة بالليل للساعة نشر بالليل. تمنى حضراتكم تكونوا فهمتوا. أعدت شرح المحاضرة لحضراتكم هو الثاني في الفيديو في الباور بوينت دوت. تمنى تكونوا بكل خير وعافية تابعوني دايما على الصفحة بأي أسئلة حضراتكم محتاجينها أو على الجوجل كلاس روم يا إما في الجوجل كلاس روم تبعتولي الأسئلة أو على الصفحة الخاصة بالدفعة بتاعتكم على الفيسبوك شوفكم على خير يا رب تكونوا استفدتم في رعاية الله مع ألف سلامة